Ooh, what's going on guys? Zephanix here. Number one, before I begin, I want you guys to take a look at the wrapping right here. I got a new wrapping on my videos right there. So right here, you're going to see, you know, the title of the video as well as, you know, rate, comment, subscribe. Right now, I got it only in text. I'm going to change that eventually. At the bottom here, I got my Twitter, my Twitch, and of course, the current Rikage Dottery. That's my boy right there. So, Number one, before I actually go ahead and get into the subject of this particular video, and I think you guys are going to like it, I want to go ahead and give love to one particular YouTuber out there who's been doing his thing, but we have not been giving any love or respect to, you know, to a lot of YouTubers out there, but we always give attention to the morons, the idiots out there, you know, and that's one of the biggest problems with our community right now, and a lot of people always want to blame this and that person and that person and this person. Actually, it's every single one of us out there who's the problem with this gaming community, and the reason why is because we always go ahead and give all kinds of um, attention to these idiots, to these morons, to these mentally challenged guys out there. And yet we never give love to the YouTubers out there who's going ahead doing their thing. You know, and that's the problem. And that's the biggest, biggest, biggest problem. You know? So we need to go ahead and start, you know, giving respect to the YouTubers doing their thing. Instead of wasting our time with the idiots. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not gonna tell you that um um, you know, not to go ahead and own one now and then, but I mean I'm just saying, dude. Focus on what's you know, try to go ahead and bring up the gaming community and by that, that means giving less attention to the guys who are bringing it down, okay? That's pretty much what all I'm saying. So, that's the reason why I want to give some love to Yosa Hop right now. Uh, go ahead and follow the link in the description below. Uh, that's this latest video. Tell him Zeph he sent you. Oh, and don't get me wrong. I mean, he's not perfect. He's a San Francisco you know, freaking fan right now. So, I mean, you know, he garbage. But, I mean, he's better than nothing. So, go ahead and subscribe. I'm just saying, you know. Like, seriously, he's a... He actually admitted he's a San Francisco fan. Like, like, who would do that? Like, why would you do that? Anyway, the team is garbage. Anyway, so, uh, how did I became, how did I get into gaming? You know, now, for the record, a lot of people already know this. They already know that, uh, I have a lot of history in gaming with my family. Literally, my, my brothers, my sisters, you know, my, my cousins, all of us, aunts, uncles, you know, all of us have been gamers, you know? And we've done a lot of different games, you know, a lot of times. So it's like gaming is literally in my blood. You know, it's always been there, always will be in there. So not literary, of course, because, you know, I'd be dead. But I'm just saying. So I want to go ahead and kind of walk you guys through with some visual aids, if you will. This is actually where I used to live. Uh, single family house right here. Um, you know, um, pretty much a single, you know, single mother taking care of three kids. You know, my sister, my brother, and I, used to, and my mother used to live right here and right here, okay? So, what ha happened was, is that, um, hold on one second here, because I got to go ahead and put, capture the mouse, okay. So, what had happened was, is that right here, there was this case, right? And there was this case sitting right here. It was this black case. So, keep in mind, I lived here and here. Not at the same time, because we lived here at first, and then we moved from there to there. Most likely because we kids and we run around and we stomp. Most likely we kind of heavy foot it. So uh, there was a case sitting here when we came home one day. So to come home, there's like a uh, in the back right there. There's like a, a parking lot. We had to come around here, and there you go. So I saw this case right, and the case actually looked kind of like this right. So the case looked like that, and it even had like Atari on there. So I'm looking like I'm like. <gasps> I know what an Atari is, so I'm excited. You know, I know. I'm like, oh, snap. So you know what I did? I copped that shit. I did. <laughs> I went ahead, and I said, oh, I know what that is. And I took it, and I walked out with it. I walked right into the house, okay? I'm being honest with you. I stole that shit, okay? Uh, and I do not regret it. I regret nothing, okay? Um, so basically, uh, for those who don't know, this is pretty much what was in there. It's an Atari 2600. So pretty much uh, this particular box uh, looks very similar to what we had, except for this one came with two, mines came with two controllers, two other controllers, which was the breakout or pong controllers. And then it came with, of course, the plug and the RF cable, which we'll show you in a minute. And it also came with a couple of games, um, Asteroids, Defender, um, uh, what was it, Asteroids, Defenders, a Donkey Kong, Breakout, and a couple of other games too. One day I'll actually kind of go through the games and I'll kind of show you. And so this, I wanted to show you this though. This is actually an RF cable. Now for those who are old enough to know what an Atari is, they are bugging out right now. 
they are laughing their forehead off right now because uh, let me explain to you how this shit work right here, Mister. You know, for you guys who uh, grew up in the age of, hey, all I gotta do is plug it into the HDMI slot and I'm good to go. Get the hell out of here. <laughs> so, okay. So if your cable was, if you were lucky enough to be rich enough, which we were not, to go ahead and get um to have a uh, TV that was actually um cable ready, you would hook this up right here to it, and that was it. But if you wasn't, you had to take a slanted head screwdriver and take these and um and kind of screw it in there, kind of tighten up in there. So it was funny because we didn't know how to do it, so I just kind of did it on a hunch. I was like, well, there's some screws on the back here. Maybe if I do this, and it just happened to work. So I'm like all happy and stuff like that. And of course, once you hit this, it made it cable ready. So you could hook up your regular cable wire here. And then, of course, you hooked up the game right here. So you plug the game right in there. It's just one cord that you just plugged in it. And there you go. So, yeah, that's pretty much all you had to do. But, like, if you didn't know how to do it, it was extremely frustrating. <laughs> so eventually I learned how to do it. And there you go. So, yeah. This was actually my first system that was not bought for me. I copped that shit. I stole it. I did. I admit it. I regret nothing. It is the Atari 2600. Now, I've had many other systems in the past, too, uh, as well as the 2600. Uh, later on, I wind up getting Atari 7200 or what's it, the Atari 7800. I forget exactly which one it was, but there's a lot of them out there, too. So I think it was the Atari 7800 or 7200, whichever two. Uh, before I got that, though, I got the... No, it was the Atari 7800 because there was a Atari 5600 or 5200. I think it was 5200. It, it's, it was like Atari 5200, Atari 7800. It was a lot of them. Uh, after that, I wind up getting... So I was strictly Atari for a very long time. And the reason why, because it just made sense. At the time, Atari was uh, backwards compatible with the... Um, Atari 2600 um, games, and then the later on, you know, it was always backwards compatible, so it was always good. So one day I'm actually do some gameplay for you guys. I'll show you Pac-Man, show you Donkey Kong from back in those days. You know, a lot of them's like it'll blow your goddamn mind uh, about how bad the graphics were uh, and the sound too. I'm just saying. But uh, so after that, I wind up. Uh, it was took a long time, and then I met my cousins, um, who you know, who I, I consider brothers now. You know, so I want to meet them, and they actually had a Nintendo uh, Entertainment System. And let me go and explain to you how much uh, this had too. So basically, it was like a huge, huge like bin. I don't want to even say the word bucket. It was like a blue, huge bin that they had. Uh, let me see if I can actually um blue. Let's see if I can even find it. Oh, whoa! Actually. Uh, that's pretty good, actually. That's exactly what we had. So let me see if I can actually get this out. Right, it's not going to work now because it, it's it likes to cause trouble and crap. There we go. Okay, so this was actually the Ben that was here. Now I want you to take a look at this, okay? And I want you to imagine this being filled not with Nintendo but with Nintendo cartridges, okay? So I'm just I'm, I'm being real with you right now. This was just totally full. With Nintendo cartridges from the top up, up this whole thing, you know, like standing on top of each other, not laying down, but standing on top of each other. So actually, it may have been long. Well, no, I think it's about this size. So yeah, all this plenty of Nintendo games, and it was amazing too. It was definitely amazing. So we had that full of Nintendo games. Um, later on, of course, we got uh, the Super Nintendo and the Genesis. I think we got the Genesis first, and um, my cousins got the Genesis first, and they had games like uh, what was it? Um, we had a Mortal Kombat. We had to get the Mortal Kombat because that was the one with blood. So it was pretty much, uh, yeah. Plus that one actually, ironically enough, uh, when the Mortal Kombat came out, um, it was actually Sega that was failing to capture the market. And as soon as Mortal Kombat came out, it was a total different ball game. Sega actually started capturing the market. But anyway, uh, so uh, we had, of course, Sonic 1, Sonic 2, Sonic 3. Uh, we had the Sega CD, and the Sega 32X. So Sonic CD, Lunar the Blue, um, Lunar the Silver Star. Uh, not to be confused with Lunar the Silver Star Story. You know, it's it's a it's a HD remix, but you know, yes, yeah, right. Even back in those days, there were HD remix. Just saying, you know. Um, of course, Nintendo I think had the first HD remix, but let's not even go there. Uh, so we had plenty of Nintendo games. Had a Super Nintendo as well. Super Nintendo we had Mario World, Mario Kart, um, Street Fighter. We had a lot of games too. Um. Of course, all the Final Fantasies, you know, the U.S., Final Fantasy 2, Final Fantasy 4, um, I'm sorry, no, Final Fantasy 3 and Final Fantasy 2, that's what it was, in the U.S., that's what it was called, so we had those, uh, we had a lot of games out there, uh, uh, 
games Lufia and the Fortress of Doom, I think we had. Um, or someone had that. I think, oh, I think actually my other brother had that one. But anyway, uh, you know, so we had that. We had the Genesis, uh, Fantasy Star. And it's funny, too, because a lot of you think Fantasy Star. And you may be thinking Fantasy Star Online or Fantasy Star Universe. No, it was actually another one of Fantasy Star that actually um, was almost better than Final Fantasy. Like, seriously, Sega did a lot of good stuff. Streets of Rage 1, Streets of Rage 2. Um, yeah, we had all the good, good, good um, um, Genesis games. Straight up. It was great. Uh, after that, of course, we picked up um, the PlayStation. And, of course, we had plenty of games on PlayStation 2. Um, I wound up picking up, uh, a lot of you already know, I picked up, I was a big fan of Lunar. So I picked up Lunar 1 and Lunar 2. That was the first time that you got a, uh, what was it, like a like a collector's edition. That was the first time you saw that on a console. Now, literally, when it came to PC, almost every game was a damn collector's edition when it came to PC. But for consoles, uh, the first um, the first game that was actually, um, let me see if I can find one here. Actually, I think it was called Lunar the Silver Star Story Complete. Um, let me see if I can find. Here we go. Perfect. Uh, actually, this is better. Is it? It might. Yeah, it's better. Okay. So I want to go ahead and show you guys something real quick here. So this is pretty much what you, what came with Lunar. So, and this is Lunar 1 and Lunar 2. And I don't even think this was enough. I think there was another... It was like a puppet that came with it. So um, it came with the game, and this one had like four discs in it. Four discs in it. Uh, this is the box it came with. It came with a map. came with a booklet right there. And I think this one came with a puppet as well. So it was like it was a puppet that came with it. A galleon puppet, if I'm not mistaken. And so after that, it actually came with the um, – uh, there was a part two. Part two actually came with a locket. I used to carry that locket with me all the damn time. It was so awesome. I used to love that locket. So, uh, yeah. So, uh, that was particularly my experience with um, PlayStation. And I wound up getting a lot once. Um, that's where the SmackDown game started. So, I had every single SmackDown game. I have literally had every single SmackDown game from the very beginning all the way up. Seriously. And even the, 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 the Raw games. Remember the Raw um, and Warzone game? Had those. Or WWE Attitude had all those games. Even the um, WCW games. A lot, a lot of games. Uh, <laughs> I really did. Uh, let me see. And it, like honestly, it's way more than this. I just can't remember. Um, Shoto, Shotokin? Shotokin? I think it was called Shotokin. Um, basically, I had part one and part two. It was one of the best. Um... RPGs out there. Like, seriously. Shotokin was great. Of course, I had to have the Final Fantasy 7, 8, and 9. Um, I didn't really play a line, 9 a lot, but I did play 7 and 8 a lot. So, um, I had that one, and um, at the time, I had got married uh, for the first time. Uh, actually, so it's a true story. I'm going to tell you something, really. I mean, a lot of people think I'm closed-minded. Let me tell you something, dude. I, a Christian man, got married to a pagan. No, dead serious. I got married to a pagan. Let me tell you something right now, man. You don't get no more open-minded than that. I'm just saying, you know. Uh, so I'm just putting that out there. But uh, so what happened was I want to get married. That's when the PlayStation 2 came out and the um, the uh, the Sega Saturn came out. No, Sega Saturn came out first before I got married. And so I got a couple of games for that one. Um, uh, Dragon's Dragon. Dragon something. It was a lot of games I got for the Sega CD. Um, Sega. One day I'm gonna go actually go through the games I actually owned one day. But right now I'm just kind of. I think I need to get a synopsis so I can sit down one day and actually point out all the games I actually had because I had a lot of them. Um, so after that I wanted to getting a PlayStation 2 and a Dreamcast. So with the Dreamcast, of course, I had. Um, that's actually when I got married after that. So uh, I got the PlayStation 2 and I wound up getting Kingdom Hearts 1, Kingdom Hearts 2. We used to laugh because it said monies. Like, it's funny. My current wife, like, hates that. Like, it says money. But my first wife loved that because it said money. So, um, it was that. Um, I actually, oh, true story. True story. True story. So, I actually wind up, um, playing, I wind up picking up, uh, Metal Gear Solid 1. I actually had Metal Gear Solid 1 already. And what happened was, I picked up Metal Gear Solid 2. So, a lot of you who played Metal Gear Solid 2, you may remember, at the end, there was a virus that got, I don't want to spoil, you know what? It's kind of been like 20 years. I can spoil it. Spoiler alert. But if you don't know, 
you ain't gonna play it anyway. So anyway, uh, basically what happened was that you find out the people you've been taking um, control from, people have been controlling you for so long, were not the real people. You thought it was Camp, um, uh, Colonel Campbell, but it wasn't. It was actually a, a, a computer AI. But this computer AI actually caught a virus at this time. So it was saying some crazy shit in your ear. And so I'm bugging out. It, keep my, It's like 3 o'clock in the morning. I am bugging out right now. So I'm like, and I woke up my wife. I'm like, baby, 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 baby. And I woke her up and I told her why I woke her up. And she started dying. And she like cussed me out too. She started laughing at first. And then she stopped. She's like, nigga, you don't take your bitch. I was like, okay, you know what? I think it might be time for me to put down the game. <laughs> you know? So um, it was that. Uh, let me see what happened with that. Um. Sorry, I, I kind of had to do that because my first marriage was there was there was some good memories, but there's a lot of bad memories. And I, I kind of because of who I am, I was very un uncouth at the time. I didn't really know who I, I, I yeah, I, I could have did better with my life than there. I, there. I went to a lot of places in my life there that I really not proud of. Um, but one day I'm going to kind of open up on that particular one eventually. Uh, so. um what the hell's happened? So I had a Dreamcast. Of course, I had uh, plenty of games. Um, 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 Shamu. I had uh, Power Stone. I had um, the, the Sega, the Sonic games, Sonic One and Sonic Two. I had, um, and then I also had uh, let's see Power Stone, Shamu. I had a lot of games out there too. Um, of course, I had every single Resident Evil on every single platform that ever came out. So there's that. Um, and then of course. Um, I, I wound up picking up, later on, I picked up the GameCube, which I played Smash Brothers and all the good GameCube games I had. Of course, I did also have an N64, too, before then. I forgot about that. And, of course, I played my, one of my favorite games, but it was Mario and Zelda, of course. But then it was also um, Perfect Dark. I became a big fan of Perfect Dark. So, after Perfect, um, after that, when I wound up, of course, we got the the... Uh, the Xbox I wound up picking up and the GameCube. So I had a couple of games for the GameCube. But what happened was is one day, um, a brother called me. And he was like, dude, have you heard about this game called Halo? I'm like, nah, what is it? And like, he was like, oh, dude, you got to get it, dude. Dude, can you get an Xbox? Can you get an Xbox? At the time, dude, Xbox was expensive as fuck. So I'm sitting there like, really? Do you want me to get the Xbox for this one game? Really? That's, that's what you want me to do? That's what you think I'm like, okay. So I wind up getting it just to see how it was. It was a great game. I'm like, oh, snap. This is it. It so I'm funny. A lot of people thought I was an Xbox fanboy, but not really. Like, I it, I actually bought an Xbox um, literally at the end of the cycle. And I wind up picking up an Xbox 360 to play the Xbox One games. Because and I was like, okay, well, I got the Xbox here. So I wind up need, I wind up just go ahead and get this one right here. So I wind up getting that. Um was an Xbox actually? No. Correction. Correction. I didn't pick up an Xbox. I never owned an Xbox. I actually picked up an Xbox 360 and then bought Halo 2. That's what it was. So um, that's what I was doing. I believe that's what I was doing. I'm pretty sure. Anyway, so that's what that was. So that was pretty much the game I owned for a while there. Uh, I didn't own a PlayStation 3 at the time because there were really no games on PlayStation 3 that I wanted. So I waited. And finally, when some games started coming out that I really started enjoying, I started to get that one. And, of course, everyone knows a story about me and the Wii. Basically, uh, no one could get their hands on a Wii because it was outselling like freaking pancakes to the point where I, I think had to go ahead. I had an inside source at a then uh, blockbuster video. At the time, Blockbuster Video was a big thing right then and there, and I had a friend who worked there, and he told me, he was actually the supervisor there, he said, hey, listen, we got a Wii game coming out here, uh, we had the, um, we have a Wii out there, and if you want to go in and pick up a Wii, you got to help us unload the truck, so I actually went there and helped them unload the truck, which is literally my second or third video that I actually did, so you might want to check it somewhere, uh, maybe I'll upload it, uh, you know what I'll do, I'll try to find it, and I'll upload it after this video, and uh, I'll go ahead and show you there. So, uh, yeah, I actually drove down there, picked it up, and that was the first time I actually got my Wii. So, um, and like I said, the last generation was some great memories because at the time I was working as a uh, nurse and uh, I was working after hours. So what I would do was I would actually bring my Xbox and my Wii or bring it to the job because I, I was keep mind I was working from like uh, like 11 o'clock at night. 
to like six o'clock in the morning. So the residents were asleep. So I literally had four or five hours to go ahead and play my Xbox on my Wii at the time. So I had a lot of time. So, all right, this is getting a little long than I thought. I'm not surprised it got this long there, but I'm, I'm glad I'm glad you guys kind of hung in there with me to go ahead and tell you about my history in gaming here. So um, there's more to it than that too. There's a lot of things out there. So one day I'm actually going ahead and go step by step uh, with every single console that I own and just kind of tell you guys about it too. Cause I really do. I, that's something I'm going to go ahead and focus on. Instead of focus on the idiots right there. Once again, don't forget to subscribe to Yosa hop right there. Links in the description below. You guys have a good night. Zeph out.